Destination Freedom. Destination Freedom, dramatizations of the great democratic traditions of the Negro people, is brought to you by station WMAQ as a part of the pageant of history and of America's own Destination Freedom. Among America's folk heroes, whose legends multiply as they are handed down from generation to generation, few occupy more of the minstrel's time than the legend of John Henry. In the second and final section of our folk tales, Destination Freedom recounts the John Henry story. They say hard times came over the land, and nobody had no working plans. The sun took the moon by her icy hand, said, Lord, let's make a new kind of man. Lord, let's make a new kind of man. Yes, <laughs> they said it all started one year when the hard times came down over the state of Louisiana. And it must have been contagious, because it caught on everywhere, they say. The whole economy stopped and went to sleep. And everywhere you looked, nothing was happening. The cotton was rotten on the ground, and folks were going around half clothed. Crops were in the fields, but nobody could reap what had been sold. The trains had stopped running because the tracks had disappeared, and everybody was waiting around, just a waiting for a miracle to get the economy going again. Well, that's when the sun and this moon got together. <laughs> That's when John Henry was born. John Henry, John Henry. <laughs> the job took nine days. The earth trembled like a leaf. All the rivers stopped running, and the lightning struck the earth again, and split it half in two like an apple. And the moon came down and sat on the right side of the split, and the sun came down and sat on the left side. While under the earth, they say, John Henry started walking, resting, biding his time, until the lightning came again and opened the gap just wide enough for him to walk out. And up he came, and the sky raised itself a little out of respect for his height. And the sun looked him up and down and wrote out a note. Not bad. Not a bad job at all. I'm writing down your calling, son. Take it. Now get on and do your job. Then the moon looked him over and said, mm. A right nice boy for my firstborn. Here, I'm putting your orders in this here package. Read it and do a nice job. Mm, a right nice boy. And John Henry stuck the package under one of his mighty arms and went off, looking for a home to be born in. And as they walked over Louisiana, farm folks stopped farming, plowmen stopped plowing, field workers quit the fields, and housemaids, blacksmiths, sharecroppers, railroaders, they all followed John Henry's mighty footsteps to an old sharecropper shack near Shreveport the home of old Casey and Carrie Henry. And they gathered outside, calling for the Henrys to come out and explain their new boy. Hey, old woman! Old woman, come on, Cassie! Yeah. We saw him go inside. Get out of here, old woman. Come on out. Quiet! Be quiet, will you? He's asleep in. Well, well, we, we don't intend to disturb him, but uh, there's a rumor that the Almighty sent him. What's he like? What, what you here for? Uh, yeah, come on, I don't come rightfully on. know yeah. yet. Now, now, go on back to your homes. Go on, go on. The old woman tried to shoo the neighbors off, but old Casey kind of liked the idea and broke out and shouted, Hey, Selma! Wait a Selma! Don't shout to wake the baby. <laughs> He's already awake. Come and see him, everybody. He's hey, up now. <laughs> 
neighbors and the Henrys squeezed inside the shack and gathered around the stretching, yawning, 200-pound baby that lay on the floor with his toes sticking out the window. <laughs> well, folks, there he is. Yes, sir, he sure comes from healthy stock, I must say. My very old. Folks, you are looking now at what's going to be the saving of the country. I, uh, I ain't sure what he's put here to, been put here to do, but you can bet he, he, his calling will be befitting the way he was born. Oh, Casey, Casey, be quiet. The boy's getting up. Uh, he'll have something to say to the folks. Quiet, man. <laughs> and they say the shack got graveyard quiet. Well, John Henry opened his eyes wide and took in the situation. The old woman had bought a bucket of water and was holding it over his head and fed the newborn baby. Hey, old woman, what's the idea of the bucket of water over my head? It's for the christening. Everybody's got to be named, you know. Well, throw the water back in the river. Already got a name. Uh, uh, you don't mind letting your mother know about it, do you? Uh, of course, the eyes only your father, but uh, I'd like to know about these here things, too, if it ain't no trouble, that is. Well, my name is John Henry. That's right. I was born in a place where the sun never shines. And I'm a natural man. Yeah, yeah, sure, but, but what's your calling? What you here for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah, 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 now wait a minute. Now huh? uh, give the lad time, give him time. Mm -hmm. According to the ragged he caused being born, it must be something terrible important. Uh, he'll save us all, don't you worry now. Yes, oh, he'll oh. save us all, won't you, John Henry? Well, maybe I will and maybe I won't. It all depends. On what? Yeah. Well, on what's written in this package here I've been using for a pillar. Huh? Yeah. It came with me when I was born, you see. It sure oh, did yeah. come yeah. with it. Well, then, 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 then what's in it? Yeah. Something big, I bet you. Well, well, wait a minute, I'm opening it. Oh, 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 oh. Lord of mercy, look at that. What on earth is that? Well, a hammer. Why, it ain't nothing but a hammer. A nine-pound sheet nose hammer like they used to drive spikes in railroad ties. Yeah, that look. is when the when the railroad was running. Looky, looky, looky! Yeah. It's got writing on it. What's it say, John Henry? Uh, it's a, it's about my calling. Oh, really? What is it? What is it? All right. It says I'm to be be a working man. Uh -oh. A working man? Yes, I'm not a working man. Yeah, that's what it says. Yeah, it sure says that. All right, I, I can see it plain. Uh, yeah. Well, folks. It's my duty to tell you somebody's played a terrible joke on the people in this county. Yeah. Of all the things for them to send us when times is hard, another working man. They frowned as they looked down at the big boy holding the hammer. They said all the fuss had been for nothing. And John Henry got mad and raised the hammer and brought it down. And he stared and saw he dug a hole in the ground a half mile deep. And was the old man ever shakier? Uh, but you, uh, you needn't take your calling so serious, you needn't. But they made me mad. Uh, how, how so now? Lots of things get done by folks who work. Yeah. But it says here, if I strike too hard with this old hammer, before I get to New Orleans, it'll be the death of me. But then, uh, just get to New Orleans before you get really mad, that's all. Yeah, you ain't been but three hours old, and you you you, you see what the end's going to be. John Henry, John Henry. And John Henry walked out into the stentious southern summer and went down down the road, his long arms swinging up a breeze and his heels kicking up a dust storm. And everywhere he looked, there was hard times and poverty, and everything was standing still. And the say he passed by a field and watched the straw boss lash at the field hand. <laughs> And the say that John Henry walked over to the straw boss and tapped him on the shoulder. Hey, 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 hey. 
sir. You acting mighty free with that whip. Get going, country boy, or I'll use it on you. Oh, I don't think so. Say, who are you? I'm John Henry, and I'm a natural man. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Oh, trouble? Look out there in the field. I've, I've been looking. Far as you can see is unplowed ground, not a soul got strength enough to break it. It's hard as concrete, and as fast as we break open a row, comes back together. I'm telling you, times is hard. Well, it's time like these when you should treat your working men right. You don't drive working men. How else am I going to get the ground broken up? And John Henry looked over the rugged field, and the men hacking away at the iron hard ground. And he said to the straw balls, Say, hey, but one thing that'll break this ground. Hey, hey what you gonna do with that hammer, country boy? Put us out of our misery? Well, there's only one thing I know that is liable to soften up this year, Earth. Well, what is it, boy? Please. It's this year. It's hammer. Hammer? Boy, it's just a little bigger than ordinary hammers. Nothing unusual. It's the way I swings it. I'm going to break this ground if it's the death of me. And John Henry raised the hammer so high it chipped off a piece of the sun. And as it came down, it struck the earth, and the earth groaned with pain. It heaved and it sighed. And John Henry brought his mighty hammer down again. And the earth gritted its tough teeth to keep from screaming out loud and tried to stay knitted together. But John Henry struck harder, and the ground saw he wasn't kidding. It started flying apart on its own accord and rippled in the furrows. And John Henry stopped just in time before he had hammered too hard. Well, uh, I guess, I guess that does it. Oh, you did. You broke the earth back. <coughs> Men, uh, meet the mightiest uh, man in the world, uh, John Henry. Uh, yeah. 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 I didn't really put my full strength behind that hammer. Then how about using it some more? Work in my fields and your worries are over. I reckon they might be. But I've got to scratch my feet on strange ground. To rest my weary mind on a strange pillar. So if you don't mind, I'll be on my way to New Orleans. John Henry. on down the roads towards New Orleans and got pleasure out of seeing the crops being sowed. But while he was passing by St. Martin Docks, he saw a sight that stopped him short. There were boxcars and boats standing empty around the piers and a hundred men were straining to lift loads that seemed glued to the ground. And the foreman's whip was a-flying. Naturally, John Henry stepped up to see what was the matter. Hey, 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 a whip ain't meant to be used on a man. Mind your own business, country boy. I'll use it on you. Now, he ain't through, you bum. He ain't through. And the men went straining and heaving at the bales of cotton and the tons of food that had been reaped from the ground. John Henry had subdued. But they wouldn't move him. And the boxcars and the steamboats had got so tired of waiting to be loaded, they had crawled under a shady tree and leaned back to rest. The foreman shouted, Hey, you, country, give a hand on this load and I'll give you some of my whip. The foreman flicked his whip and John Henry leaned over and slapped him into the river. And when he crawled out shaking wet, John Henry slapped him again. And the slap was so hard, <laughs> it dried out his clothes and starched him stiff as an ironing board. <laughs> and uh, naturally, the foreman had a change of mind. Oh. Well, now, Mr. Country Boy, ain't there no way you and me can get together? All right. What's all the fuss about? We're just trying to get the boxcars and the steamboats loaded so the food and cotton can get shipped to them that needs it. Them means everybody in the world. They're waiting for us. I know it. What you don't seem to know is that the things is so hard, ain't a man or team of horses can load the boxes and boats. Plenty of food around, but people are still starving today. 
What you need is a natural working man. Well, so like me. The, so is the hundred I got down there. There's only one of me. I'm in a hurry, but I'll get down there and help him load. Go right ahead, Mr. Country Boy. Go right ahead. And John Henry rolled back his sleeves and got down among the steeves and loaders and said... Now, stand back, boys. All right. All right. Stand back. I'll show you how to get the bales and the baskets on board. I'll show you how to... John Henry laid his shoulders against the bales and heaved and hold. But the bales wouldn't budge. They struggled all morning, and they struggled all evening. And when the sun came up again, they caught the food and bales still spoiling on the docks, and the foreman crying. All that planting and plowing was for nothing. It's all been for nothing. No, it ain't been for nothing. You, you say something, Mr. Country Boy? If I put down a little of the... Special strength I was born with, I could get them cars loaded. Well? Only... Only John Henry thought of the warning about using the hammer, and he hesitated. Well, then he thought of the folks from Maine to Mexico awaiting the food and needing the cotton for clothes, and he pulled out his nine-pound hammer. What's that for? Just a big old sheep nose hammer. I use it for my heavy work. You ain't going to bust open the crates and bales and, and scatter stuff all around, are you? No, I ain't going to hit them that hard. I'm just going to hit them hard enough to push them on board. Come around, men. I'll show you how it's loaded and done. Now, you, you take a hammer and you hold it this way. Step up to the crate and you swing this way. <laughs> John Henry's hammer slapped the boxes like a bunting baseball and they sailed through the air. <laughs> and pretty soon all the boats was loaded and all the train cars do. And John Henry was ready to go. <laughs> sure like to have you regular, Mr. Country Boy. <laughs> My heel's itching for norm. Thought you said you'd come to help get rid of bad times and, and get things back on their feet. Well, I've been doing that. You ain't doing nothing yet. You loaded the boats and the, and the cars, too, but that's what's bad. There ain't no rails for the trains to roll on. What are you talking about? I'm saying the trains can't move without tracks, and there's nobody who can lay them fast enough for the world to get this here food stuff before they all starve to death. Uh, laying rails none of my business. I'm going to New Orleans, the way I plan. I don't have no railroad tracks in my plan. John Henry, John. And John Henry walked away from the box cars and steamboats and went on his way to New Orleans. But he was worried, because everywhere he went, the food was packed and bales of cotton were stacked, but they weren't moving nowhere. And he came around the mountain and saw a railroad gang trying to lay rails. And the gang captain saw John Henry coming and hailed him. Hey, country boy. My name's John Henry. Ah, you the John Henry that beat the ground into taking seed? The same. And the one that loaded the cars and boats? That's right. Lord, boy, I'm glad you come this way. But I ain't aiming to drive no steel. I'm headed toward New Orleans. And then maybe up to New York. A man's got to play some as well as work. Sure, sure, but suppose you get to New Orleans and New York and found everybody starving. When are they due to starve? Well, according to them that knows, they got great day in the morning. What? They got 12 hours. We got 1,500 miles of track to lay down before we reach New York. Men! Hey, men, you hear that? Lay on them rails. Lay on them. Do you want a job, John Henry? I ain't aiming to lay no rails, I told you. I'm going to New Orleans first. John Henry walked off from the mountain curve on his way to the city. He stopped by the riverbank and drank seven swallows of water, took out his hammer, and testing to see if he could throw light strokes, he tapped the river. <laughs> <laughs> and all the water flew out and left the desert dry. He's amazed again by his strength 
And as he turned toward New Orleans, he heard the hammer behind him ringing. And he saw on the road car stalls waiting for rail lines to move on. And he went back to the captain. Hey, uh, hey, captain. Yeah? Ah, uh, you back? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I drive so hard, I don't know my own strength. But I suppose I can tap light enough to drive your rail spikes in. Oh, could you now? Yeah. Well, it happens that another company's getting the contract. Now, what's the matter? You've got the men. Sure, I got the men, but they've got the best drill in the world. Oh, no, that can't be. How come? Because I'm the best drill in the world, and nobody's got me. <laughs> the captain looked long and hard up and down John Henry's lanky frame. He spied him holding the nine-foot hammer in his hand like a toothpick and said... There's a newfangled steam drill they're using in the tunnel now. They... They say it'll lay the rails faster than any man. They say the steam drill will get the rails laid fast enough so the train can get going. They say that? Ever would. <laughs> Still ain't fast enough to save anyone, but it's faster. Look at that. Yeah, I see. That's mighty powerful. Sure is. But still, the only way to lay enough rails down before daybreak so the trains can get rolling is to throw a natural working man on the job. You bet that steel drill company all the money you got against my driving. I'll drive two spikes to the steam drills one. You mean that? I said that, didn't I? Hey, men, come yeah. here. Yeah. Gather round. Yeah. We ain't laying off. Now, sir, John Henry is going to race the steam drill, and if we win, the food trains will get to New York, and we get the contract. Well, the men gathered around and brought the steam drill boss and gave him the proposition. He looked at John Henry and wanted to make sure. <laughs> Now, this here's a country boy is going to lay his bone and back against the steel and steam of my drill, huh? That's right. Okay. <laughs> the fool and his money soon bought it. You backing him, Captain? With everything there is. Good, good. Now, we'll set up side by side, start together. And may the Lord help him who falls behind. All right, boys, I'll get in there. Get in there. And they say they got the steam drill, and John Henry called for two new 20-pound hammers juggle him in his hand, and call for a shaker. Shaker! Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Henry. You hold the spikes while I'm throwing my might against them, huh? That's my job this day. Then hold them straight. I'll be throwing from my hips on down. Yes, sir. Well, the bets were laid, and the train stood a mile off waiting to roll. They brought up the drill, and John Henry took his place near the tunnel. And the captain called. Get set. On your mark. Go. John Henry went to the tunnel. And they put him in front to try. The rocks were so cold. John Henry seemed small. And he most dropped his hammer and cried. Lord, he most dropped his hammer and cried. <laughs> And John Henry began on the right hand, and the steam drill began on the left. Before this machine beats me with steam, I'll hammer my fool self to death, Lord. Hammer my fool self to death. They say you could hear the ring of hammers all the way to Baltimore. John Henry was standing flat-footed and making the hammer travel with the speed of lightning. And John Henry said to his shaker, Shaker, why don't you sing? Cause I'm throwing 95 from my hips on down. Just to listen to the cold steel ring. Listen to the cold steel ring. John Henry told his shaker, Shaker, why don't you pray? Cause if my hammer should miss this spike, tomorrow be your burying day, Lord. Tomorrow is your burying day. Well, the captain said to John Henry, the storm is blowing in. John Henry said to the captain, the 
that ain't nothing but my hammer truck and wind, Lord. Ain't nothing but my hammer truck and wind. Ain't nothing but my hammer truck and wind. Well, the drilling kept on until it was even Stephen. Then John Henry forgot he wasn't supposed to slam too hard with his mighty hammer. He forgot the warning the sun and the moon had given him. And he threw his full power behind his blows. And it wasn't long before the steam drill broke down trying to keep up. John Henry told the steam man, and look beyond what I see. Your drill's unbroken, the holes all choked, and you can't dry steel like me, Lord. You can't dry steel like me. <laughs> well, the man that invented the steam drill thought it was mighty fine, but John Henry drove 50 feet in the steam drill only made nine, Lord, and Lord. Steam drill only made nine. <laughs> But John Henry couldn't stop hammering, and his hammer was striking fire. Lord, he drove so hard till he broke his poor heart. And he laid down his hammer and he died. Lord, he laid down his hammer and he died. Well, they took John Henry to Washington and they buried him in the sand. There were people down east, there were people out west come to see such a steel driving man. Come to see such a steel-driving man. And they say the trains rolled along the tracks laid down by John Henry. And hard times rolled away from the south. You know what else they say? Well, they say they built a statue for him and let it stand on the mountaintop. And people argued for days, they say, where John Henry came from. John Henry, they say, is from England. John Henry, they say, is from Spain. John Henry, I say, is a Louisiana man and the best of the steel driving gang. Lord, the best of the steel driving gang. You have just heard Destination Freedom's dramatization of the folk story of John Henry. Destination Freedom is produced by Homer Heck, written by Richard Durham and directed by Dick Loughran. The role of John Henry was played by Fred Finker. Narration and song by Dean Almquist and Oscar Brown, Jr. Others in the cast were Weslin Tilden, Jess Pugh, Sid McCoy, and Cliff Norton. Special music was composed by Emil Soderstrom and played by Claude Shiner, Elwin Owen, and Jose Bethencourt. This is Charles Chan inviting you to be with us again next week when Destination Freedom will tell the story of Louis Armstrong, King of the Trumpeters. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.